Hello friends, well, Cooper, Potter, and now Nagelsmann. Chelsea are taking no prisoners when it comes to managers this season. The change of tactics are going to be crazy under Nagelsmann. And we're going to tell you exactly how it's going to unfold. Let's begin with the man himself. Who is Julian Nagelsmann? Well, he was a Bundesliga manager at the age of 28. Now, if you're not 28 yet, you'll not understand how crazy that is. But you will once you hit 28. Not only did he get the gig at 28, he has also been immensely successful despite his age. Nagelsmann is the youngest ever manager to reach the Champions League semi-finals at only 33. So there simply can't be any doubts over his quality. And I don't care if Bayern sacked him because he's a gifted manager and his tactical brain for me is pretty unmatched. As The one problem, again, as I've previously said in several videos, is the fashion sense. Like some of the garms. Awful. Inexcusable. Maybe we put it down to age. Anyway, Nagelsmann was ultimately sacked by Bayern for a loss against Bayer Leverkusen and some underwhelming results since the restart of the World Cup. So harsh. You know, considering that they swept aside PSG in the Champions League and did brilliantly in the group stage before that in a very difficult group and are it's still in contention, of course. And also still in contention for the Bundesliga crown as well. So why Chelsea over Tottenham? This one is really interesting and perhaps shows the direction of strategy of Chelsea and maybe points towards the direction of which Bowley wants the club to move over the next five years and probably what he wanted to do with Potter. He wanted to have a young, interesting, exciting manager who's on the front foot of world football. Christopher Vivelle and Lawrence Stewart have both been brought into Chelsea as technical staff. Both of these people worked under Nagelsmann at Leipzig and their relationship is still good by all accounts, having had success at Leipzig. Progressive football and innovative coaching were the words used by Chelsea when they appointed Graham Potter and again, this appointment follows the same train of thought. Let's talk about that tactical approach then of Nagelsmann, that's why you're bloody here, isn't it? He's always been known as a forward-thinking manager who has new ideas and isn't afraid to be inventive with his approach. This has seen him use a variety of styles and structures which makes him one of the most adaptive and adaptable coaches in world football. A managerial chameleon, if you will. The 5-3-2 that he used during his early days in charge of Hoffenheim, the first club that he was a manager of when he, hit, when he was 28, have I told you that? Was actually often a 5-3-2 outside of possession and then a 3-5-2 in possession. He later used this at Leipzig, but with better players at his disposal, he was able to be far more expressive with the approach and it worked fantastically well. The key principles of the 5-3-2 were that the centre backs would play out from the back, one of the centre midfielders would be a sixth and protect the central defenders or cover for the wing backs when they advanced. The other two central midfielders would join the attack, sitting parallel behind the two strikers. So in a sense, a similar principle to how the 4-2-2-2 works in the sense of an attacking structure. At Leipzig, Nagelsmann then experimented with a 4-2-3-1 and had a lot of success with it. He later took this to Bayern, but changed the structure just a little bit. The key principles of the 4-2-3-1 3-1 at Leipzig were, again, playing out from the back, still a huge, huge focus for them. The fullback splitting in the opening of build-up play, providing width. Angelino, of course, the left back, he would have that license to go forward, whilst uh, Mukiele on the right would tuck in to form a back three. Nagelsmann was one of the early believers of that elbow fullback setup that has become so prominent now. One of the double pivot would have the task of covering out wide if the fullbacks moved forward, and the versatility of the tactic was made possible by intelligent players such as Sabitzer, Olmo, and Forsberg, who were comfortable moving around in play. Nagelsmann likes attackers who can play in different positions so he can make changes without needing to make substitutions. Key principles of the 4-2-3-1 at Bayern Munich were playing out from the back remained unchanged. Once again, the whole formation was built around the double pivot of Goretzka and Kimmich, so a little bit different here. Kimmich was used as a six, while Goretzka was used as a classic box-to-box -box number eight. Muller as the 10 would play directly behind Lewandowski and be an out-and-out -out shadow striker. And then you had Sane as the left winger who would move inside into a central area whilst Davies kept the width on the left. Pavard as the right back would tuck in with Kingsley Komen, keeping the width 
on the right. This meant that they had a sort of uh, a 3 1 1 5 in attack. And lastly, towards the end of his Bayern Munich career, Nagelsmann started to integrate a 3 1 4 2 with attacking wing backs and a midfield three of Kimmich, Goretzka, and Sane. This didn't really work in the Bundesliga and they had the most success using the 4-2-3-1, the formation they beat PSG with. So how did Chelsea line up under Nagelsmann? Well, so for this section, we're going to explore two different routes that Nagelsmann could go down for Chelsea as the 3-5-2 and the 4-2-3-1, maybe formations that I think he rotates with until he finds his favourite or his favourites. Let's start with the 3-5-2. The 3-5-2 would probably look something like this, given who is fit for Chelsea between now and the end of the season. The back three probably picks itself with maybe Badia Shiel coming in for Kukurea. Personally, I believe Badia Shiel is a better defender in this system than Kukurea, but from a ball progression perspective, this is what I think Chelsea would go for. And Kukurea, although his ball progression hasn't always been that great, he's been very cautious. I think with a bit more confidence, he can be that player and be a better player. The midfield is really interesting. Kante makes the most sense at the base of the midfield, given his athleticism. I know we've not seen that. It's been the other way around for a long time. But his ability to cover in all areas of the pitch, to read the game, he's possibly the best fit there right now. But Nagelsmann does like his six to be extremely technical. So I think we're going to have to see how this one goes. I think he might go with the easy option, which would be to play Enzo there. And he becomes that Kimmich-esque player. But with his ability to create, Nagelsmann may want him that slightly bit further forward up the pitch. I think a split striker partnership of João Felix and Havertz is probably the most likely outcome given Nugglesman's history. Again, sort of struggling with strikers when it comes to Chelsea. And again, Brozier could have been a good option, but Potter could have told you that. This season at Bayern, he did something similar with Mane and Muller as split strikers. Felix has done well for Chelsea in central position so far, so this role I think suits him well in my opinion. Whereas for Havertz, he has the qualities to excel in this role, similarly to how Muller did it. But I think he just requires the coaching to be able to do it. So if not, maybe Sterling is a player that Nagelsmann would consider. Sterling has played in the advanced forward role for Chelsea this season and was an excellent outlet in behind. The other options for this is playing Enzo at the base of the midfield and maybe having Mount as one of the eights. You've got Chukwameka is also a player I believe that may do really well as one of those eights and we haven't seen enough of him. Conor Gallagher too is another option for them. I think energy is essential, but so is tactical intelligence. So Nagelsmann will need to find out who his preferred players are when it comes to those areas. Moving on to the 4-2-3-1. So to describe how the 4-2-3-1 works, the easiest way is to show you how it looks on paper and then show you it again as to how it actually looks in the game. So on paper, and I know the game's not played on paper, Jim. No, I know that. Um, it's played on grass, isn't it? It's played on green digital screen. So on green digital screen, it would look like this. You'd have a back four of James Fofana, Koulibaly and Chilwell would probably be Nogglesman's go-to if he came in today with who is fit. Enzo and Kante would line up as a double pivot in theory with a front four of Jao Felix, Madueke, Sterling and Havertz up top. In play though, it would look like this. At Bayern, Nagelsmann often liked for his side to look something like this when in possession. Pavard often started as a right back and defended like one. But once they had the ball, he'd take a roll on the inside and form a back three. Rhys James is someone that could do this and has done it in the past. Enzo would have the role of Goretzka in being the link man at the base of the attack. The reason I've included Madueke is because he has a one-on-one -on -one take on ability and has the ability to hold width in a similar way that Kingsley Coman did at Bayern Munich. He's one of the only natural pacey right wingers at Chelsea and may have a good shot at starting if Nagelsmann chooses this 4-2-3-1. In the system, I think you start Sterling on the left, but in possession, move inside and operate as an inside forward with Jao Felix drifting to the other side to do the same thing. The thing behind this is to overload central areas while still having options out wide in Chilwell. The important thing about this formation is the diamond that it offers. In the 3-5-2, there's a similar thing, but it's more of a square. But the overall idea Idea behind it is having a zone of control around zone 14 and having options laterally around the opponent's defensive midfielder. This makes playing against a single pivot very effective for Nugglesman's sides and provides a lot of options around zone 14 for his teams. So if it was me, I'd go with the 4-2-3-1 when it comes to how Nagelsmann plays. But you might disagree. Let me know in the comments down below. If you want to support the channel, hit the like button and subscribe. 
and I'll see you soon. This screenshot shows one of a few times where Chelsea were able to do this. The next screenshot is representative of how Chelsea were on the day. Creating a total of 2.1 XG, 1.6 XG, and not scoring can often seem like a team that were unlucky. But I think this screenshot is an example of how poor the finishing was and how out of sync, I think that's a good phrase to use when it comes to Chelsea, that in particular Mudrik is at the moment.